two more locations placed under enhanced movement control order. Face mask fraud cases involving losses of up to 4.2 million ringgit. Good evening, you're watching News on 2 and I'm Brenda LePaul. Malaysia has recorded the lowest number of positive COVID-19 cases in weeks with 36 new cases, which brings its total to 5,425. Health Director General Dato Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah today said there have also been 98 recoveries and no new death case reported in the last 24 hours. Dr. Dr. Noru Hisham also said that the total number of patients who have made a full recovery from COVID-19 now stands at 3,295. Menteri Kesihatan Malaysia ingin memaklumkan bahawa terdapat 98 kes yang telah pulih dan dibenarkan discharge pada hari ini. Ini menjadikan jumlah kumulatif kes yang telah pulih sepenuhnya daripada jangkitan COVID-19 dan telah discharge daripada ward adalah sebanyak 3,295 kes. Iaitu bersamaan dengan 60.7% daripada jumlah keseluruhan kes. Suka cita dimaklumkan daripada maklumat terkini yang telah dilaporkan ke CPRC Kebangsaan, tiada sebarang kes kematian yang baru setakat ini. Oleh itu sehingga jam 12 tengah hari 20 April 2020 jumlah kematian kekal 89 kes. Datuk Dr Nor Hisham also said that there are 2041 active COVID-19 cases in the country where 45 cases are being treated in the intensive care unit ICU. From that amount 28 cases require the use of ventilators. The government has decided to impose the 6th Enhanced Control Movement Order or EMCO in Pusat Bandar Utara and Pasar Borong Selayang area in Kuala Lumpur starting today until the 3rd of May. Senior Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said as advised by the Health Ministry, the EMCO implemented will cover 8 residential areas. Pasal A. Jalan 6 Strok 3A, Pusat Bandar Utara, Kuala Lumpur. Pasal, Pasal B, Jalan 6 Strok 3A dan 9 Strok 3A, Pusat Bandar Utara, Kuala Lumpur. Pasal C, Jalan 2 Palang 3A, Pusat Bandar, Kuala Lumpur. Pasal D, Jalan 2 Palang 3A, Pusat Bandar Utara, Kuala Lumpur. Pasal E1, Taman Sri Murni Fasa 2, Jalan 1, Palang 2D, Kuala Lumpur. Pasal E2, Taman Sri Murni, Fasa 1, Jalan 1, Palang 2D, Kuala Lumpur. Pasal 3, Taman Sri Murni Fasa 3 Jalan 1 Palang 2B Kuala Lumpur dan Pasal F Taman Batu View dan Taman Batu Hampar Kuala Lumpur Jadi ada 8 pasal yang kita buat total lockdown ini Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri also urged residents to remain calm and just stay at home. He said residents who require help or have any inquiries could call the PKP DBKL Operations Room at 03-4026-7222 or Central Police Headquarters at 03-4048-2212. On another note, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the Pasar Borong Selayang will not be closed as the EMCO will only affect the residential areas. Di Pasar Borong itu kita tidak tutup Pasar Borong. Kita tutup kawasan perumahan. Terutamanya rakyat ramai di kalangannya, rakyat Rohingya yang memegang kad UNHCR tu. Jadi kawasan itu yang kita tutup. Sedangkan Pasar Borong masih lagi dibuka seperti biasa. 
Datu Sri Ismail Sabri also said that losses amounting to 4.2 million ringgit involving the sale of face masks have been reported during the Movement Control Order MCO period. He said the police views the matter seriously as some people are making use of the current situation to deceive the public. Minister said the suspects use social media and face-to-face -face sales as their modus operandi. As such, Dato Sri Ismail also asked the police to be more vigilant, especially when dealing with online sellers. He said all buyers should check the bank account of the sellers before making any payment. This can be done through the Commercial Crime Investigation Department's Semak Muller portal or through www.biztrust.ssm.com.my website. Jadi, tolong. Jangan mudah percaya kepada tawaran-tawaran murah, topi muka dan peralatan-peralatan lain. Cek dulu dengan portal Semak Mula dan juga laman web yang saya sebutkan tadi. Kerana jumlah kerugian dah mencecah 4.2 juta ringgit akibat daripada penipuan-penipuan tersebut. The Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, MOSTI, is seriously discussing the importance of setting up a vaccine development research centre to enable the country to manufacture its own vaccines. Deputy Minister Ahmad Amzad Hashim said the setting up of the centre was seen as crucial to deal with the spread of COVID-19 or any other infection or pandemic in the future. Ahmad Amzad also pointed out that Malaysia once had biotechnology laboratories in the past, but not much focus was put on them. But in terms of expertise, the country has many expertise in the biotechnology field. Kecuali perlu dipahami bagi membolehkan satu-satu vaksin itu dihasilkan ia menyebabkan proses yang panjang sehingga dua tahun dan melibatkan mungkin apa ni peruntukan melibatkan ratusan juta. Jadi apabila kerajaan telah melihat apa ni keadaan yang berlaku hari ini saya percaya apa ni keperluan ni menjadi semakin signifikan untuk menghadapi cabaran di masa akan datang. Meanwhile, Ahmad Amzad said Mosti had awarded a 50,000 ringgit research grant to University Sultan Zainal Abidin to develop the COVID-19 health risk assessment and self-evaluation system which can detect and manage the risk of COVID-19 infection. He added the system used Industrial Revolution 4.0 technology to detect and manage the risk of COVID-19 infection and for a start, it would be implemented among the university's staff and students. The investigation papers on Deputy Health Minister Dato Dr. Noor Azmi Ghazali, who was said to have violated the Movement Control Order, MCO, when he attended a dinner event at a religious school in Pera recently, is expected to be completed today. Inspector General of Police Tan Sri Abdul Hamid Badaw said the investigation papers will be submitted to the public prosecutor for further action. Tansri Abdul Hamid added that all the cases which went viral such as this will definitely be investigated. Last Friday, several photographs of Dr. Noor Azmi uploaded on Facebook showing his visit to a religious school had gone viral with netizens saying he had violated the MCO. The media reported that Perak Police Chief Dato Razaruddin Hussein said initial investigations found that Dr. Noor Azmi had earlier viewed the preparedness of the health ministry staff in Lungong in his capacity as Deputy Health Minister. 41 Myanmar citizens who defied the Movement Control Order, MCO, by participating in a water festival in Bandar Baru, Salat Tinggi recently were fined 1,000 ringgit each by the Sepang Magistrates' Court today. Magistrate A. Ahiruddin Elias Boy Acho handed down the sentence to all of them after they pleaded guilty to the charges which were read out by a Burmese interpreter. He also ordered the accused, aged between 19 and 34 years, to serve a month each in jail if they fail to pay the fine. According to the charge, the men were charged with gathering by participating in the Tingyan Water Festival in an area of infection in the compound of a mill factory workers' hostel in Sepang between 8.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. on the 12th of April. They were charged under Regulation 6, subsection 1, of the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases, Measures Within the Infected Local Areas, Regulation 2020. 
Deputy Public Prosecutor Nurul Farahin Yahyas asked the court to impose a deterrent sentence as the offence was committed during the MCO and their actions seem to be challenging the country's laws. In mitigation, Counsel G. Rajasingham, who represented all the accused, appealed that the sentence to be a fine on the grounds that the foreign workers had valid permits and came from poor families. Police have arrested 23 individuals for attending a wild party in a condominium at Jalan Gomba, Setapa. Wang Samaju Police Chief Superintendent Rajab Ahad Ismail said during the 1.40 a.m. raid, police also found five packets of ketamine and eight aramin 5 pills. Superintendent Rajab said all those detained were aged between 14 and 23 years. Investigations also found that the participants were invited by their close friends via WhatsApp. Eleven of the suspects also tested positive for drugs. The case is currently being investigated under Section 12, Subsection 2 and 15, Subsection 1, Subsection A of the Dangerous Drugs Act. The suspects are also investigated under Rule 11 of the Prevention and Control of Infection Infectious Diseases, PCID, Measures Within Infected Local Areas, Regulations 2020 for violating the MCO. The Fire and Rescue Department, JBPM, today conducted a disinfection operation at the Sultan Abdul Halim Airport, or LTSAH, near Alostar, in efforts to curb the spread of COVID-19. Its Assistant Director, Operations, Muhammadul Ehsan Mohamad Zain, said the department had been asked by the LTSAH management to carry out the operations there. Muhammad ul Ehsan told reporters today, although the LTSAH is not in the red zone area, the department still carried out the sanitization work on common amenities there such as seats and countertops as well as frequently touched surfaces to curb the spread of the virus. According to him, a total of 20 Kada JBPM personnel, 5 personnel from the Kota Sita District Health Department and 26 LTSAH staff were involved in the operation which started at 9.30 a.m. Muhammad ul Sun said to date, the department had conducted disinfection operations at 99 locations statewide, including the Kota Sita District Police Headquarters. Meanwhile, LTSAH Manager Pute Ramli said today's operations was the first large-scale disinfection and cleaning exercise carried out at the airport. He said only Malaysia Airlines and Firefly flights were allowed to operate during the current movement control order period with an average of 30 to 40 passengers recorded daily. He added that Thermal screenings would also be conducted on each arriving passenger. A total of 1,327 individuals have been charged in court for violating the Movement Control Order MCO in Johor. Johor Police Chief Dato Ayub Han Maidin Piche in a statement said, to date, a total of 2,545 arrests were made for various offences related to the MCO. Dato Ayub Han said another 136 individuals were arrested yesterday. All of them were detained and investigated under Section 186 of the Penal Code for obstructing a public servant from discharging duties and Section 270 of the Penal Code for conducting malignant act likely to spread infection of disease dangerous to life. He also said that those arrested will also face charges under Section 22, Subsection B of the Prevention and Control of Infectious Disease 1998 and Rule 3 of the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Measures Within Infected Local Areas Regulations 2020. Yayasan Pelaburan Bumi Putras or YPB Board of Trustees has appointed Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin as its Chairman and Finance Minister Tengku Dato Sri Zafrul Tengku Abdul Aziz as its Deputy Chairman effective 14th April. In a statement today, Permodalan Nasional Berhad PNB said the Board of Trustees comprises four members, adding that Tan Sri Dr. Zeti Aziz and Tan Sri Abrin Buang will remain as members of the Board. PNB said that the YPB Board of Trustees and PNB's Board of Directors welcome the new appointments and will work under their leadership and guidance to take PNB to the next level as it strives to become a distinctive world-class investment firm and continue to generate sustainable returns for its 14 million unit holders. 
The Pahang State Assembly held a one-day sitting today during the movement control order. Speaker Datuk Sri Isha Muhammad said the sitting today had to be held to fulfil the requirements stated in the state's constitution. However, Datuk Sri Ishak added that precautions had been taken, including imposing a one-meter distance between the state's assemblyman's seats. No official opening ceremony was held, while everyone present had to have their temperatures taken. He said face masks had to be worn to avoid infections and to break the COVID-19 chain, adding that the heads of departments were also not invited this time to reduce the number of people in the chamber which already has limited space. He said they are adhering to the advice not to have too many people stay too long in an enclosed area. He pointed out that the State Assembly was also disinfected yesterday. He said that the duration of the sitting had to be reduced as well, with no question and answer session and the debate of the Pahang region speech being held. Dato Sri Isha, however, said the arrangement was only for this sitting, adding that everyone's health is paramount. As one of the most recognisable faces on Malaysian television and most viewers would have probably seen him on RTM's news bulletins since the mid-1980s, television icon Farid Ismet Imer will forever be missed by us after he breathed his last breath at 11.10am today at Asunta Hospital in Petaling Jaya, Slango, due to cancer. He was 65. The late Farid, who is fondly remembered as Patna among his RTM colleagues, was born on the 26th of October 1954 in Telo Intan, Perak. Dubbed the man with the golden voice for his crisp, clear and commanding enunciation, Farid started his career with RTM in 1986 and was also the voice behind several popular television advertisements. As a newscaster, the late Farid was often a permanent feature on Dunia Jumps Pulo, an hour-long bulletin dedicated to world news since 1987 on TV1. He was also known for ending his broadcasts with thought-provoking proverbs as well as poems, such as his famous catchline, Fikir Fikirkan Renong Renongkan. Throughout his illustrious career, he also worked with fellow veteran RTM newscasters, including Dato Harjit Singh Hallen, the late Datin Salasya Zakaria, Mary Ann Masilamani, Haslinda Hamza, Datin Hamida Hamza, Maiza Musa and Tengku Permaisuri Norashikin. A funeral prayers was held earlier today at Masjid Jamik Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah in Petaling Jaya and he was laid to rest at the Taman Medan Muslim Cemetery at 3.45pm. Our deepest condolences to the family of Farid Ismet Emir. With that, we conclude news on to this evening. In our top story, two more locations placed under enhanced MCO. Join us for updates at noon at 12.30 tomorrow. Now, before we go, don't forget to wash your hands regularly, practice social distancing, and most of all, let's adhere to the movement control order and just stay at home. I'm Brendan LePaul. Thanks for watching. Good night.